the whole thing was about um, how every, lots of people were asking, like, how can we always finish guys from mount and blah blah. And his point was that because mount's the best position in jiu-jitsu, everything we do in jiu-jitsu is to get to mount. And um, since working this series and uh, the way that Roger said, it's kind of made sense. It's become my favourite position as well. I used to like side control because I like the options of being able to move around and all the submissions. But um, there's a few things here. The first one is there's different types of mounts. Firstly, if I'm sat here on Dean like this, he's perfectly comfortable. Not only that, but he's not under any threat because I'm very low down his body. I'm sat on his hips. Uh, so there's no pressure on him. There's no threat to him. And also, if he bucks his hips, if he bridges, I move a long way. Yeah? Every inch that I climb up Dean, my position gets better. Yeah? So this is one end of the spectrum. This is the entire other end of the spectrum. Super uncomfortable. He's carrying all my weight through his rib cage. If he bucks his hips around, doesn't move me one bit, and he's in a huge amount of trouble. So, we'll do the first part today and we'll finish with a submission and then we'll save the really nasty stuff for Sunday, he already knows what I'm <laughs> We'll save the really nasty stuff for Sunday and we'll finish with some more submissions. So the point is, I need to get from here to there. First thing is this. So we'll just practice this first, actually. We'll just practice this first. Um, Roger made a good point. In competition or in spark, particularly in competition, um, when you first get to mount, is not the time to start trying to progress mount. When, when you first get to mount, the guy's trying to stop you from being there for three seconds, and they go wild. So, normally you're in a competition, you reach mount, and the guy goes wild. Because he doesn't want you there, he doesn't want you to score the points. So, first thing we're going to do, is we're going to just get to mount, a nice low mount. I'm going to, um, hook my, I'm going to hook my, put the soles of my feet together next to his bum and I'm going to just take a wide aeroplane base. Now, to make this more uncomfortable for him, I'm going to uh, lift my knees off, lift my hands off the ground like I'm slide diving. But any way that Dean tries to butt, he puts me on my base. So he's carrying all my weight. It's quite uncomfortable, right? Even though I'm a lot lighter than you, it's very uncomfortable. So that's the first thing we're going to do. Just <laughs> and the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to anyway. You like from side control, slide your knee across, and as soon as you get to mount, go to um, go to the skydiver position, and your partner's going to go wild and try and get you off. Yeah, we're going to do this for a couple of minutes. It's quite tiring. So I go to mount. Yeah. Your partner just go wild for three seconds, same as like in a competition, enough for you to get your points. Um, and then we'll move on to the next thing. Is that cool? One, two, three. So problem number one is stopping the wild, bucking, crazy guy. The moment I've got mount. One, two, three. I've got my points and they will always settle down. No one can keep bucking for longer than a few seconds. They will always settle down. Problem number two, so if you go, um, if you go frame across the belt like that. Yeah. So, problem number two is, Dean's smart, and he's made a frame on my hips now. So he stopped bucking, he's realized he's lost the position, I've, I've got the points, I'm in mount, but he's made a frame across my belt because he's trying to stop me from getting up here. Now, if I try and push up, he just goes with me because he's got a frame. Yeah? So we're gonna do, um, a nice ish weight. We'll do the really nasty stuff on Sunday. <laughs> You're selling but, that Sunday gig really nicely, thank you. <laughs> no one's going to come on Sunday now. <laughs> so, we're here. He's got a good frame. I'm not moving my hips up. So I'm going to stay low. I'm going to stay low. Because at the same time as he's stopping me progressing, he's not protecting his neck. So, I've got to get him to want to move his hands. Easy way to do it. There was a number of different ways to do it. I'll give you an easy cheaty weight, grab the inside of his collars, I'm going to jam my knuckles up into his jawbone and his carotid artery. He will move the top. <laughs> yeah, this is not yeah. nice. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> right. 
So that's a good way of getting people to move their arms, but the likelihood is you won't submit any of that. Yeah, it's not a good submission. The second way I can do it is I can look for like an Ezekiel choke. I reach under, grab inside my own gi. Um, one really interesting detail Roger showed is that often when you try and get the Ezekiel choke and you try and go in like this, it's very easy for him to defend. And it's because there's no space to go in. But if you go up to the top and pull it down in, then it's quite difficult to defend. Um, and uh, the other thing that he said is because the weakness in the Ezekiel choke is this grip. So most people try and finish an Ezekiel by lifting the choking arm. Dean, reach your right arm right over the top and push, no, push straight through, swim right through, punch through, no, no, punch through, over that way. Yeah, look, my grip breaks. So when you get the Ezekiel, leave the choking piece in place and lift the other arm. So two ways. Now, no one, he's not, he's not going to do that in reality. He's not going to sit there and let me as if he's going to bring his arms up. The point is, he's got a good frame. There's a million ways to break this, but two easy ways are grips in, jam that, and get up to here. Or, he's got his frame in, stop protecting his neck, start looking for the Ezekiel. I probably won't get this, but look, his arm comes up. And I get to come up. And I've gained some ground. Yeah, that's all we're trying to do at the moment. So let's start from there. We'll start from our, um, we'll start from our skydive position here. The partner gets a good frame in, and we start looking to give him something to move his arms towards, yeah? Is that cool? One, two, three. So, so however we've done it, we've gone from low stable mount here, got there, and I've gained some ground but I'm probably not in, a, in what I would call a high mount yet. Yeah? Now I'm in like a mid mount position. That means that my thighs are under his, um, under his arms. What I don't want is his elbows on the inside. Yeah? But if I've, if I've forced his arms up, I've probably got to about here, mid mount position, yeah? So there's a couple of things. Uh, I'm gonna show you uh, two different things from here. The first one is how to create an amount of pressure that um, will start, sometimes forces a reaction of people to start push. I want him to start pushing and extending his arms away. So the first one is this. I just take a collar grip, a double collar grip here, spread my legs wide and just sit right through him. You can create a lot of pressure this way, especially like when you're, because you're kind of at the bottom of the rib cage. Um, Roger actually submitted me with this. <laughs> it's so terrible. But just sitting, and if you can see Dean's face, there's a, he's quite a bit heavier than me as well. And all I'm doing, I'm in a perfectly stable position. <laughs> I'm in a perfectly stable position, and he's got all of the, he's got all of the problems here. And he's probably going to start pushing against me or start trying to move me around. Here. So that's one. The second one is this. I'm start moving his elbows up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let him. I'm going to imagine Dean's clever. He doesn't want me to move his elbows up. I'm just going to come forward over and I'm going to lock his head. By locking his head, I'm stopping him from shuffling back, shuffle back, and now I'm back in low mount. So I want to keep him where he is. I lock his head and I'm going to pick one side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get my, the inside of my elbow pit here and the back of Dean's elbow. Now, again, if me and Dean are in a strength battle, I'm not going to win this. But I just try and move it like that. It's not going to happen. But if I connect to the floor and just walk my fingers like that weird thing off the Adams family, his whole strength advantage goes away. Now I have this one. I lock his head. Do the same thing on the other side. Now I have the other one. Lock his head. Now, it's going to slide all the way up to the top and I'm going to pinch my knees together I'm going to keep Dean's arms crossed and there's no such thing as too high, if I'm here, can I go higher? Yes, I can. Even better, yeah? Because the, the, the more uh, higher I am, the more uncomfortable he is. So try those two things. Mid-range mount position, pull on the collars, sit your weight back into him. This fit, you'll feel it, I know it looks like I'm unstable, but I'm actually dead stable here. Other one, lean forward, 
lock the head so it can't go anywhere get underneath the elbow and again if I just try and use force here it will not work but if I connect to the ground and just walk my fingers it should work on pretty much anyone any size let's try them two things and then we'll go into some finishes and then we'll start firing nice. cool one two three we managed to make him bring his arms up slightly we got to like a med mount position and then got in behind the elbows and here this can take as long as you want it to one of the important things about the mount position is that you cannot get done for stalling from here from the mount and the, the mount and the back are the only positions in competition if i got this in the first minute and stayed here for the next 10 it doesn't matter i still win yeah um so take your time with this sometimes it might happen a bit and then he pops his elbow back at well it's fine we go again i'm not in a rush he is yeah um another uh, little interesting detail that roger showed about the foot position was um one of the risks to being really high up in the mount is that um, dean can swing his legs up and get them um, get his feet under my armpits and push people it's super annoying when that happens. Um, so one of the details about being in this like mid to high mount position, if, even if I got all the way up here, this is when they start doing desperation moves like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my heels on his hips here, as you can see. This will stop him from bringing his legs up, and even if he does try, can't get him very far because my my heels are blocking his hips. So anyway, we got to here. High mount position. We're just gonna do two finishes here. Obviously from here, he's in a huge amount of trouble anyway. Uh, but we're just gonna do two finishes from here. First one we'll do is the arm bar. Um, it seems really obvious, but it's really difficult for Dean to defend this arm bar now because I've got his uh, arms squashed together. I'm just going to pick whichever arm is on top because he, he won't be able to defend it. Two on one, lift it up, and um, as long as I'm up high in the mat, I've got my knees squeezed together. Tap with your hand through for me. Yeah. Um, I don't need to necessarily sit off for this. I can just lean into it, push my hip forward. Yeah. If you want to look cool, you can do the whole. But it's adding risk because you're adding complexity. Most of the time when I get this, you don't need to. Because you've got, your, your mount is so good and it's pinned so tight. Take the top arm, you can't just try and defend this top arm. And I'm just gonna pull it, push my hips in and lean into it. Yeah, that's the arm bar. The second one, in fact, let's try that first and then we'll do the second one after this station. Just, um, just one final... <laughs> try not to let your arms cross. Just one final detail on that arm bar is sometimes, if you look how um, Dean's got his arms, it's kind of difficult for me to pick which one I want. So I can fish through and then push them together. If any time I get his elbows crossed, Dean's... Are you alright then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, any time I get his elbows crossed, so even if he's like here, whatever, this is okay to take the arm bar, but if I want to be really mean, push his arms across each other. Now nah, it's a terrible amount of trouble, yeah? Uh -huh. Or, you could use his hands, push them down. There's no defense from that point, it's different. Right. Uh, the second submission we'll do is a head and arm triangle. I, for years and years and years, I never ever got these properly because I was missing some important details. So we've come up high. Let's say um, we got here and I only managed to get one arm up. Well, let's say I just fancy this finish. Push it to the side. I tuck my head in. Um, one of the important details that I used to miss on the head and arm time is that obviously it's a choke. So my shoulder needs to be across his neck. So there's times, if you, can, if you guys can see from that side, there's times when I used to get the head and arm time and look, I'm on his face. And I squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and not get it. And there's times when you should be down here. And I squeeze and squeeze and squeeze and, squeeze and not get it. So one way to make sure I'm in the right place is I can feel when I'm on his face. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slide my shoulder down onto his chest. And then I'm going to slide it back up. 
and because he's got a jawbone, that will put me in exactly the right place. So if you're not getting this, chances are you're not on the artery. Because um, this is a blood choke, it's a go to sleep choke if you don't get it on the artery. Right, right. So, maybe I've got it in the wrong place. Slide down, slide back up. I'm going to lock my hands together here in like a gable grip. I'm going to come off to the side. I'm going to come up. Now what puts it on is me turning my hips and my head in towards him. I don't need much of a squeeze. I'm not really squeezing at the moment. As I turn my hips and head in towards him, that's where all the power comes from. I don't understand the biomechanics of it. I don't understand why it works. I just know that every other way that I've tried this choke, it doesn't work, and this does. You're right. Yeah, the shoulder's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Are you exactly. doing the uh, flat on the ground version? Um, I'll loosen it up. So you won't normally make it to being flat on the ground. <laughs> um, <laughs> try and get everything in the right place. And I end up flat on the ground. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, if Dean's head's there, I'm going to pull up and drive with that and pull with this one. This is a different version of the finish. Um, requires a bit more muscle. My personal favourite is we get here, I lock my shoulder into position, come up here, and then as I bring my hips to the ground, I'm turning my hips and my head towards the. You probably won't get to the ground though, that before that. Yeah. Again, I don't understand it, but just turning that way somehow just makes it work. <laughs> you want to try that? Yeah. One, two, three. Okay, so, back to the map. Um, just to recap some of the stuff that we did on Thursday, because I know not everyone was here. Remember, low mount is a stability position. Wide arms. My knees are off the ground, so that means all of my weight is going through Dean. My feet are locked together behind his bum so he can't get his legs in. And anywhere he goes, he runs into my base. But at the same time, he's carrying all my weight. So this is a stability position. We keep this for as long as it takes to kill some of the fight in him. Because the moment we get to mount, they go crazy. It's so low mount, stability position. But Bad for attacking. Whilst I'm here, I can't attack you. High mount. Great position for attacking, but a little bit difficult to get to. So, just to recap, he wants to keep me low because I cannot attack him. I need to give him a reason to remove this frame. Uh, on Thursday, we use these two. Just grabbing the collar, knuckles into the jaw, Arms come up, and I'm here, yeah? Yeah, I remember that one. <laughs> and uh, remember, what we're looking for here is, I'm not trying to choke him. If, if I try and choke Dean like this, he's too, he's too savvy to let me finish this choke, and it's too easy for him to break. All I'm trying to do is get a reaction. So I'm going to use my knuckles, I'm looking for the carotid artery, and I'm looking to get just underneath the jawbone. If you get under the jawbone, um, this will work on anyone of any size. So, you go here, I'm low, I've got my base, I want to start climbing high, I start squeezing in. Dean's arms come up, I come up to a high mount. When I get high, I'm trying to get as far away from his hips as possible. All of his power to buck and roll me comes from his hips. If I'm up here and I'm not on his hips, when he bucks, it doesn't do anything. The other thing that I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to get his arms up above his head and crossed. Sometimes, um, again, like if Dean's really strong here and he stops me from bringing his arms up above his head, like again, if there's a big strength differential, it can sometimes be difficult to move this. So, again, feet on the hips, and I'm just gonna, he won't be stronger than my, than my, uh, than my hips are. So, feet on the hips and just push forward. Arms come up, I get to gain some more inches. In terms of trying to cross his arms, best way to cross his arms, push them across. Again, the, the human body is not strong in this plane of motion. So it's very easy to cross them across. So, next thing. 
Um, we spoke a little bit on Thursday about how once you get to mount, the person underneath you's life should just consistently get worse and worse and worse, right? Um, and we did a couple. Of, we did one finish. Uh, we did two finishes on Thursday. We did the Ezekiel choke and we did the arm in choke, uh, the uh, head and arm triangle. What we're going to do today is um, show you a way that when people are really, really stubborn and they're just tight and they're just protecting themselves, how to get them to open up. Because with the best will in the world, if Dean stays super tight, he's protecting his neck, he's happy to let me get high in the mount. It can sometimes be very difficult to open people up and create opportunities from here. So, um, again, something that uh, Roger showed me was, take away all of their oxygen. Again, I want his life to just consistently get worse and worse and worse. So, here's what I'm gonna do. Wrap both hands on his head. What I'm trying to do is control his plane of motion. I don't want him turning to the side. Both hands on his head, and I'm gonna smother all his airways, his nose and his mouth with my chest, yeah? Um, this always creates a reaction. <laughs> so, sorry, dude. I'll use someone else. Dude. So, control the head. I've got it in tight. He's still, not, he's still, control, he's still uh, blocking off all my submission uh, alleyways, but that's it. And I just stay here. Now he's gonna run out of air, or he's gonna, he's gonna do what he just did there. He's gotta take his hands out and start pushing. Um, there's no way to stay there if you're on the bottom. Yeah? So, he's on the bottom, he's being really tight, he's conscious of getting attacked, so get his head, and that's it. His air is gone. He has a limited amount of time now. There you go, and there's the arms. Yeah? Just get used to doing that. Um, we'll move on to some finishes from there as well. I'm gonna show two different finishes today from there. Um, but just get used to doing that, and the person on the bottom, um, give your partner feedback. Uh, if you can still breathe, don't react. And try not to react until all the air has run out. Does that make sense? No, I know it sounds silly, but if I just, if, if the moment Dean smothers me, I start going, smother you. Then he's not getting the real feedback. What needs to happen is, I stay in tight, See, he needs to know that he's done it right and I've run out of air. Is that cool? One, two, three. Okay, cool. Now I go to um, a couple more submissions. So we did this one. So where we've got super duper high, I've crossed the arms over. There is no way for him to defend this top arm. We did this on Thursday. There's no way for him to defend this top arm. It's an easy pick. Pull to my chest hips forward. I don't have to sit off for that arm bar. Also, the benefit of this one is, is because I'm so high and I've got this now, don't do it. But if he bucks me, if he tries to buck me now forward, he will break his own arm. Um, but let's say we got here. With, and we're kind of, you got, sometimes you kind of get, especially for guys really big and strong, you kind of get stuck in this stalemate position. I'm trying to push his arms across, I'm trying to get can be quite difficult. So now we're gonna look for a cross collar choke. This is, uh, I know there's a million different ways to get the cross collar choke, but I find this one is the, uh, for me it's the highest percentage one, especially if the guy's bigger and stronger. So what I'm gonna do, instead of reaching in with this grip, where I've got four fingers inside, um, that's the hardest grip to get, so, um, I want to try and make, make life easier for myself first and then look for that grip. So what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to go thumb inside, punch the floor. And with this thumb inside grip, what this allows me to do is I can get my uh, forearm onto his chest and just like we did with the head and arm choke, I can use it to drive up under Dean's neck. What that does is it, allow, it creates this big space for me to get underneath, and I'm going four fingers in on this side, four fingers in, and then cross collar choke. To finish the choke, I don't flare my elbows, that's the wrong way to do it. I'm gonna pull my elbows into my ribcage, like I was doing a, what's that weights move? 
Marcel. Bent over row, that's the one. So I'm pulling as if I'm pulling that in and I'm going to look to put my head to the floor at the same time. You probably won't get there because the choke will be on first, yeah? If the choke's not coming on, with 99% certainty, it's because your hands are too far apart. They've got to be very close. So look, I go there and there. If Dean sits up, look how close my hands are. My thumb can almost, if I try to touch my thumb and fourth, uh, little finger together, they probably can touch. That means I'm close enough. If, I do, if my grips are any wider, as much as I squeeze, it won't work. The strength of a cross collar choke is about how close your hands are together. It's got nothing to do with your pulling power. Does that make sense? So, one more time. You get here. So normally, it, the cross collar choke is taught you put four fingers inside and then you start reaching for this other grip, which can be difficult. I'm going to go with the thumb grip first. Thumb inside. I'm going to use that to smash his chin. And that makes space for my second grip to go in and I can take my time, I've got it in nice and tight. Pull my elbows to my ribs, put my head to the ground. That's it, no, no. Yes. Uh, I don't know. I think it's just because I'm lowering my base. Yeah, it makes sense too. Because your base gets lower and more weight going through. I didn't even notice that, thanks. <laughs> um, just to kind of finish off this uh, full mount series, so we've got, we've got low mount, stability. I can smother bring his arms up. Or I can smash the face, bring the arms up. I can get to a high mount. From, from high mount, I've got my arm bar. I've got my cross collar chokes. Um, I've got my head and arms, but, and then everything in between, and one good thing, I just saw Ross doing this as well, Ross and Paul were kind of doing a bit of resistance against each other and just feeling the different positions, and you will flow through these, so sometimes you'll be here and then, you know, I'll try that, and that might not work, and then I'll smother the face, and then that might get me here, and then I might walk the arms up, so it's all a series of things, they don't necessarily happen in sequence, it depends very much on what the partner does, so I'm just going to, um, finish with uh, this last technique um, that does sometimes happen even with experienced guys if they know you've got a really good mount and they don't want to expose themselves um, it is a bit of a rookie mistake but um, it's more of a, a survival thing and that is when the guy just hugs around you here so the reality is all he's doing is holding me in mount um, but from here it is also very difficult for me to get any kind of meaningful offense going. So yeah, it's more on move for the guy at the bottom, but also it's, it's stopping you doing what you do. So, I'm just gonna finish with this last one. So he's holding me in mount. Yes, he's making the mistake. Here's what I'm gonna do. Plant one hand, pick a side, plant one hand. Come up to almost like a technical mount type position. And I'm trapping the arm here. Now I'm going to use my free hand to push his face, sit back onto my heel. So I'm uh, putting my left butt cheek on the floor, grab the belt, sit over, into an apart. The beauty of this is also that as I'm coming over into the omoplata, quite often I can get a nice grip here or if Dean's arm comes out because he's trying to posture, we can get under here as well. And that makes it a lot stronger. It feels a bit weird because you're kind of coming off the mount. But remember, you're coming off the mount straight into a submission. So, one more time, he holds me, plant my hand, plant my foot, and I'm trying to, I'm not leaving a massive amount of space here. Everything here is in tight. I'm holding it in tight, push on the face, grab around the back to the belt, sit back onto my heel, come into and right. If I get the chance, I'll grab this far arm as well, because this is quite nice uh, to finish. Yes, mate, can you switch it around so you can see the back? Uh, yeah. <laughs>